Thank you for joining us for Not Without Blood. Hi, my name is Leroy Herring. Uh, we're studying, uh, continuing our study in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, as we just sit and discuss various topics, really that comes to our mind through the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit the last few programs, and probably the next few also as we just sit around the table, drink a cup of coffee, and have a good time in the Word of God. On my right-hand side is Presley Watson. Thank you for being with us again, Presley. On his far right is Alan Abayan de Guzman. Uh, same to you, Alan. Thank you for being with us again. Uh, Pleasure. As we've been talking about that Jesus has purged our sin, Presley, mm. as Jesus has made us clean, as Jesus has taken, was the only one that could take our sin. Yes. And he made us clean and justified us. So then, <clears throat> I'm saved by grace. So then we go through this series and we run into problems. We run into this uh, stumbling block. We run into this stumbling block. Uh, you know, we wake up in we wake up in the morning and we go out and there's a big bag of rocks sitting at our front door, and we pick it up and we think we got to carry it oh, mm -hmm. instead of looking at it as a bunch of stones that I'm put together and and build steps to go to higher ground. Yeah. I can either pick up that bag of stones and and make it a burden, or I can pick up that same bag and lay it out. And That's use good. it for steps like to higher ground. Right. That's so, when Paul got in trouble, mm -hmm. man, I just can't get rid of this problem, God. Uh, I need to go here or I need to go here. Lord, what do I need to do? How did Jesus, what did the Holy Spirit address him on that? What did he tell him was... Sufficient for every problem yeah, that yeah, he yeah. had. That's, that's it. He, it. he wanted to, it was, he had, a, you know, the scripture <clears throat> says the messenger of Satan above right. him, the, the persecution he was going wow. through. And um, God, you know, the, the the word he gave to him, he says, my grace <clears throat> is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Wow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so my, no matter what weakness I have, mm -hmm. <clears throat> now if I understand that right, my weakness may be sin. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> grace is sufficient for my sin. Mm -hmm. I may <clears throat> be uh, someone that needs salvation. Mm -hmm. So what's sufficient for my salvation? Grace. Mm -hmm. I may need someone that uh, needs to be healed. Mm -hmm. Is grace sufficient for my healing? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> when Jesus through the Holy Spirit, told Paul, my grace is sufficient. To me, he was telling him that no matter what his need or problem Amen. may have mm -hmm. or may come, mm -hmm. if you look to me and understand that I won back everything that Adam lost, mm -hmm. and by grace I give it to you, yes. mm -hmm. And he's met my every need, hasn't he? Right. Through grace. Right. There, there's a verse that says this. First of all, um, grace is not a topic. That's right. what I used to think. Grace is the unveiling of who Christ is. It's, it, it is Jesus Christ. The, the scripture says, <clears throat> the law came by Moses. Well, watch this. Grace and truth <clears throat> came by Jesus Christ. Right. So John 1.17. We, 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 yeah, we see... Um, the word grace and the word truth are all one. So if you right. touch truth, you touch grace. If you touch grace, you touch truth. Awesome. Very much. Yeah. <clears throat> truth if, and it, grace. Truth and grace. If you study grace, it's going to reveal truth. If you study truth, truth is going to reveal grace right. to you. And, and, and we see those two are one. And you know what? What God joined together, let not man 
put asunder. Uh -oh. <clears throat> and, but notice what he did separate. He separated the law and he separated yeah, right. grace and truth. So right. when God separates, let, <clears throat> let not man, man put together. But, you know, the Holy oh, Spirit good. separated good, the veil when Jesus died. Religion sewed it back up. Yes. Ooh. Very much. That's good. Uh, well, this, we have a scripture, right? And our topic is, it, it talks about a person. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes, I guess, Leroy, even in the Philippines, you know, with, when we begin to say, share grace and people ask, man, can you talk about something else? Can you talk about faith? Can you talk about <coughs> salvation? Can you talk about healing? Can you talk about here and there? It's, grace is not just a piece of the pie. It's a whole package. Yes, right. Yes. It's the gospel unto salvation. In the book of Acts, how many times it talks about the person of Christ? Grace. Mm -hmm. right. There was great grace was upon them. And the Lord added right. to their numbers. It's the result of grace. Right. It's, it's the person. That's, it's yeah. given by Moses. Came by Jesus Christ. Right. Right. And the verse, I think you're about to read that. All right. right? Uh, let us turn and Philip, if you will, put up uh, on the screen. Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. And I'm going to read this out of the uh, ESV version of the Bible. It says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the Lord, of the glory of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself to for us to redeem us from the lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good Ooh, works. What a verse. Wow. Amen. That uh, encapsulates the message, encapsulates gospel. Be first, he starts off pressing with the grace of God Ooh. has appeared. Uh, Bringing a salvation. subject. Ugh, a subject good. doesn't appear, does it? Uh uh. Wow. A, do on. a doctrine doesn't appear. No. Uh uh. So this grace that we are talking about, that's going to teach us, mm -hmm. is an individual. It's a person. Wow. It's is Jesus. a person. You know, the, yeah. one of the meaning I look at it, right here, Leroy, Jesus. is uh, I can't hardly pronounce. You know, it's epiphano, meaning to to bring to light, to be visible, to become, <clears throat> or to give light. A subject cannot give light. Right. You know, it has to be a person. Notice, for the grace of God has appeared with salvation for all people. Right. A subject, a topic, a series cannot change. It has to be the person of Christ. Right. You know, I'll go back to John 1, 17 mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so it, it, it's, it is not just because it's the grace of God. Is you know, Paul says, I am, when, when we connect this scripture, Titus chapter 2, 11 to 40, when we connect right. the scripture to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, I am what I am by the grace of God. Now, we Correct. just quote that, the same, the same verse that says, because of the grace of God, I labor more than the most. So, the grace message, the person, Christ, doesn't make you lazy. Yes. Again, so, Paul is saying, I am what I am. What you see, every area of my life, and then whoever I'm discipling and mentoring, it is the grace of God. The book of Acts is the person of Christ. Mm. And again, it connects to what Jesus said. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Right. What in this end time is going to bring re not just revival or transformation, it is the gospel of grace. Right. Have you noticed on TV, others begin, begin to adopt the message of the gospel of grace. Have you yeah, noticed yeah, that? Yeah. Right. And of course, others, you know, tearing it down or... Uh, uh, you know, trying to bring down the mess of the gospel of grace. Yes. What makes up, you know, all of us here, Leroy, Brother Presley, is, you know, God is working in us. It, we, we have not arrived. Mm -hmm. We have not, we're still learning, you know, like I mentioned it before, we're still learning our lives. Sure. But Very because much. of the gospel of grace has opened up so many scriptures, yes. has brought so much freedom, have put us in a place that, hey, my position in Christ, because I'm hidden in Christ, mm -hmm. I am in Christ, that I am complete, your spouse, my spouse, anybody's spouse doesn't make you complete because you are in Christ, you're complete. If, it's that, if that's not true, the people that's been married once or twice, meaning they're not, they're not complete. Right. Yeah. See, that's the question. So all of these things, that uh, the message of the gospel of grace is, a, is, is, is the end time message, it's the, the new covenant, new wineskin, the, the, the better covenant, Amen. a better mm -hmm. 
glory, not the old glory. Mm -hmm. right. But I believe that's why we will never get tired. When you talk about grace, you're talking about everything. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. It is the end time message. It is. Yes. It is the it message is. for the end time church. Well, revolution. <clears throat> when when uh, I have mentioned before the Laodicean church, it was the seventh church in Revelation mm -hmm. that Jesus wrote a letter to. Yes. Mm. The first six, he mentioned something good about the first six. Mm -hmm. But on the Laodicean church, he didn't find anything Nothing. good yeah. about that. I, I want to throw something in here that's really important. Um, you cannot find anywhere in Scripture that in the end time there will be a false grace message. Mm -mm. And, you know, that I've, I'm hearing ministers and preachers, you know, having, you know, on their own TV and they're, you know, talking about this counterfeit grace. And mm -hmm. you, you, don't, you don't see it. But here's what you do see. It's a counterfeit holiness. Right. Okay. Now, when Jesus came to earth, did he fight against a counterfeit grace or was it a counterfeit holiness? Right. Did when Paul... That's good. Right. When Paul, he fought against counterfeit yeah. holiness. Self-righteousness. That's right. self-righteousness. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, that's good. And right. when Paul came, or when Paul was preaching, was he fighting a counterfeit grace? No. It was counterfeit holiness. Right. It's what he come out of. Right. And, you know, we looked even the... The Christian movement out of Martin Luther in the, I believe, 1600s, 1500s, right. again, counterfeit holiness. Yes. Right. And that's all we see it in so, Scripture. You know, right. Actually, the Scripture says this. this. This will set you free if you get a hold of this. It says that in the end times, there'll be doctrine of demons. And I believe, if you can help me, Alan, I think it's Peter, 2 Peter, right, in, in that Scripture. And then it talks about um, having her conscience seared with a hot iron. Doctrine Timothy. Can you quote the scripture? Maybe they can put it on the screen, or if you can find it, Alan's going to find it real quick. Yeah, it's. Um, uh, I we got you. so many verses in our mind right now. Right, but, right. It, but um, anyway, um, while yeah. Alan's finding this, I want you to see this. But it says this that in the end times, th they're going to be. Um, oh, good, right here. We got Second, uh, First Timothy, chapter four, four verse one. Another spirit. He says, "Now the spirit." Um, it says that in the latter times, watch as some will depart from the faith. Okay, in other words, we're going back under the law. We're yeah. not using faith. Watch as paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teaching of demons. Okay, through the hypocrisy of liars. Watch this, whose conscience are seared with a hot iron. <clears throat> right. Now, I, I want to share something real quick. We've always been taught what that means is right. your conscience is so calloused. That means you cannot sin, right. sin no more. Right. That's not what it's talking about. Mm. Okay, what it's talking about here. If you look it up in in the Greek translation, I'm looking at it right here. It it, it means this. The seared part means that it's it's like a brand, like a cow brand. But the translation is this: is to mark by branding and and watch this. It, it's the brander conscience who sows carry about the marks of sin, and, and here's the definition we're seeing here. Watch this. Who carry about with them the perpetual consciousness of sin. Mm. What it's saying wow. this, it's a gospel that's being proclaimed. You don't see God in it. You don't right. see Christ in it. It's all about do this, get good, don't do this, that's get bad. Do, you know, it, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's law messages. A ca watch this. Counterfeit holiness. Yes. And you know what it leaves? Wow. Watch this. Our conscience are branded with a perpetual consciousness mm. of sin. And here's what I'm talking about. This is where I used to be. You feel, un in other words, when, when you read the Bible, all you think about is your sin. You, yeah. you won't go to church. You're too guilty. All you think about is your sin. You're confessing 100 times a day. Right. God forgive me. God forgive me. You don't even know what you're confessing because of consciousness of sin. You don't feel That's close to mean. God. Yeah. You feel condemned Ooh. because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. But the blood of Jesus has purged us. From this consciousness of sin, you know what? Here's what Jesus right. wants to set. The, <clears throat> here's what Jesus wants to do to the church. He mm. wants us to free us from the consciousness of sin. And, and what does grace do? We enter the consciousness of Christ, Christ. Jesus. Right. Mm. Right. And whenever I went into grace, wow. we, we all walked down through this road. We all Very used much. to be there. Yep. And then God spoke to my heart. He said, "This you have more revelation." Of your sin, actually, he said you had more revelation of sin than you do do my blood, and that's the question I want to ask to those who are watching. <clears throat> do you have more revelation of sin than right. you do the blood of Jesus? Mm -hmm. That's more revelation of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil than the tree of life. Amen. Right. right. 
But, but you know what? We're free of that because we've been forgiven. Your Christ conscience, not sin conscience. That's why Paul was asking. That's what Brother Lula, I think I mentioned it before one of the episodes. That Paul was asking, is Christ a minister of sin? Right. And Paul's respond by asking, of course not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the church day, you know, many, many of us have been taught, you know, we need more preachers of sin. You know, right. we need more preachers of sin. There's less of that. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The, the record tells and the history tells you, the, the, the history repeats itself. More sin committing, more producing yeah. sin, it's more producing guilt, sin. more yeah. condemnation. It's not a conviction yeah. of righteousness. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, the strength of sin is, is the, the law. law. Exactly. First Corinthians 15, and, and 56. What Alan said, exactly. he hit the nail. Now, if you're under law, immediately you're going to say, this is heresy, I'm going to turn and take. Don't turn, just, just listen. Because he, here's, here's the, the thing, watch this. The law came by Moses. The, the scripture says, Paul said this, and let's go back to the verses mm -hmm. in the scripture now. Paul said, I would not have known sin except through the law. Right. Mm -hmm. Listen, the law is well able to reveal our sin. Right. There's no problem with that, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And when Christ came, he didn't redo what the law has already done. What I need is an answer to the sin. <laughs> he came to reveal the Father, the right. solution, okay? That's it. That's it. And so here's the truth. The, the, the way the scripture teaches, it, it says that the law entered, now this is what it said, the law entered that sin may abound. Okay? Where sin abounds, grace more abounds. Right. So the truth is, this is the truth. When you give the revelation of sin, According to Scripture, it increases more sinning. That's a right. Scripture. Now, That's a Scripture, it, right? We yeah, just read that. Yeah. It. it says the, law, the letter kills. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it depends what crowd you preach to. Mm. To, to people that are <clears throat> self-righteous, that, that, that are watering the law down like the Pharisees did, that yes, they can keep it. Right. They need the standard of the law to end their self-righteousness. Right. But watch this. To the church, you're already righteous. The Scripture says you're no longer under law, okay? But you're under grace. And that's the problem. We're, as a church, mm -hmm. we're going back under the law. Right. And you know what? Everybody's backsliding. I mean, you, you go to the altar every week. There's something wrong because, you, you know, we're seeing many churches where people are coming to the altar every week, getting right with God every week. We can't even stay right with God. We're sin conscience. You know, the whole youth group are backsliding. There's something wrong. The church is not right. meant to be that weak, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that weak. We're mm -hmm. under law and because it says, watch this, and, I, and I'll shut up and let them talk. It says, for sin, let's look at it again, right. Romans, for sin, sin will not have dominion over you. Right. Watch this. Very you're much. not under the law, but under grace. So when you're under law, sin will have dominion over you. Right. But when you're under grace, who is the person, Jesus Christ, you have the victory and power over sin. It's already been accomplished. The freedom, the liberty. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, and it's already been accomplished. We don't have to obtain the victory. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yes. You know, Paul ran into the same thing that we run in today because people ask him the same question, which Romans 6, 2, when he answered, you know, are you saying then that we should sin more where grace shall abound more? No. Yeah, you know, yeah. he, he, he ran into the same thing. He wasn't preaching Same that thing, yeah. uh, because starting in Romans 5.20, you know, for by one sin came in and by the disobedience of one, you know, led yeah. to the disobedience of all. But by the obedience of one, we can have victory over the disobedience of one. I, I, want, right. to, I, I want to give a parable that's right. going to make this all clear. It really helped me because God, you know, he unfolds illustrations and right. parables. But let's get it simply as we can uh, as far as law and grace okay before we came to Christ we were in nature like a pig I'm going to use that animal or we can use a wild horse either one yeah. okay <clears throat> here's what religion has done religion says this okay wild horse or pig we're going to put you in a fence okay and that's what religion religion has built a fence in, in other words we take the unsaved person and we tell them you know what, you need discipline, you better straighten up, get out of this sin, get out of this sin, this is what you need to do, you need to straighten up and act better, okay? Right. Now, what are you going to do when you put a wild horse inside a fence? He's going to jump it. It's going to stir up that nature. That's what religion <laughs> has done. Right. The fence, let me say this, represents the law, but here's what Christ did. What Christ did, he says, you know what, let's kill the pig, let's kill the horse and put a new animal in place, right. which is a lamb. New nature. New nature. Now, totally different. The, the pig loves to eat the, the, the slop, okay? But you know what? The lamb loves to eat the grass. Right. Okay? 
Now, let me ask a question. If you put a new animal with a new nature, does he need a fence? No. No. He doesn't need, not necessary. No. That's what it means in Galatian. Love, joy, and peace is the fruit of the Spirit. The better glory. Well, you know what? The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. That's enough. In, in other words, if that cannot, having a new nature, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. living in me, if that can't make me live righteous, mm -hmm. nothing will. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. but let's go no, a little. You need a, you need a ten. You need there the we ten go, yeah. <laughs> right. That's what we did. Very much. Now, oh, really, nine, because you yeah. know what Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't need to now, be Saturday. If, if we want to go deeper into the illustration, we go to Facebook on the weekend. That's it. That's right. Um, or the yard. We we take we take the um, I hear you. We we take a new animal. Okay, imagine we have a lamb. Okay, now now here's what religion has done. We say, you know what? We don't believe that the nature is enough. <laughs> So let's put a fence back on them. And that's what we've done in the church. We put them back under law. Legalism, right? Religion. Now we're depressed. Yeah, that's it. Right. And here's what happens. And if you grab a hold of this, this will set you free. When you build a fence around the new animal, we, the scripture says we are new creations in Christ Jesus. I'm just trying to give an illustration, mm. kind of relate to it. Here's what happens. You suppress that new nature, and now you trust the fence. And that's what we're saying. Right. We have suppressed the gift of righteousness, which is Christ Jesus. Right. We are trusting in external rules and external commandments that right. we have watered down. We, and that we made. We made. Mm -hmm. Because right. you might say, well, we need to obey the commandments of Christ. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Have you cut your hand off? Right. Have you plucked your eyeball out? Well, I, I just read a commandment where he said, D don't even make a vow. Right, okay? that you can't keep. That, or that you didn't keep. Uh, let me ask you this. He don't said, we do that in a wedding, don't hey, we? He, he said this. He said, if you lust, you commit adultery. Right. Well, let me ask you this. He said, for you to be forgiven, you have to forgive, not only with your mouth, but you have to forgive from the heart. Not only that, you have to go to that person. Right. Let me throw another one at you. Every idle word, man will give an account of danger. Have you obeyed it perfectly? Jesus says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, you can obey that, or you can do this. You can trust what Jesus said when it, before he preached all of that. He said, right. I did not come to destroy right. my own prophets. I came to fulfill it. Not, right. not you or not I. He fulfilled it. And so I, I could have a, a choice. Do I believe that Christ fulfilled it? Or am I trying to fulfill well, it? Well, that verse you just quoted, Presley, is uh, Matthew five seventeen. You know, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Yes. <clears throat> and that begs the question. We try to fulfill it. Right. Yeah. Who is fulfilling the law in your life? Yeah. Right. Wow. Who mm. is fulfilling the law in that's your good, life? That's a good because question. if Jesus said he came to fulfill it and I'm trying to do it, then I'm having no part of him. I pushed yeah, him yeah. out and I'm depending on me. Mm -hmm. So Matthew five seventeen, I believe is correct if you want to turn there. Just who and ask yourself the question, who is trying to fulfill or who am I depending on to fulfill the law in my life? Yeah. Am I depending on Christ and his perfectness, mm -hmm. his holiness, yeah. or am I depending on my self-righteousness and my holiness? We, the problem is we have trust so long, so many years, as righteousness being some rules or commandments. It mm -hmm. sounds so foreign. Right. And real quickly, and I'll shut up, amen. I can't help it, amen. Mm -hmm. Can I help to speak the things we've heard and seen? But... <laughs> but Think about your dog at home. I, I've got to use my dog parable. Have you ever gave your dog a commandment? Thou shalt wag the tail, or thou shalt eat the food. You don't have to give him no commandment because by nature he's going to do them things. And that's what God right. is saying. The new covenant, he has written his law of love already in your heart. Mm -hmm. So by nature, <clears throat> it, it, it's in your nature now. Right. It's because, because of yeah. the cross, we have the Holy Spirit and that spirit resides in us because of the blood of Christ. Yeah. And the spirit is what changes us, not that's it. internally. How beautiful. Right. Ain't that, that's just the good news. Right. right. Instead of us trying to do it externally, right. which is what the law does. So when we depend on external situations, I am also slapping yeah. the, the face of the Holy Spirit because yeah, I'm is. not dependent on him. And that's basically what as we started off with what Jesus was telling Paul when he says, my grace is sufficient because the Holy Spirit came through the blood of the cross. He could not come, Jesus said in John 
14 through 17, I must go that I can send yeah. the Holy Spirit. Right. So he could not come until then. <clears throat> so only because of the cross we have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit only operates through the blood. And Paul was being told by Jesus, <clears throat> by the Father, my grace is sufficient yeah. because you've got a power source in you <clears throat> that you are not tapping. Yes, that's good. And it, when you tap that power source, sin's going to go away. That's it, yeah. Healing's going to arrive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only have divine health, but right. you walk in divine healing. You're in, the, you're in the promised land. You're not in the wilderness no you're more. Right. Right. You're daily <clears throat> rations. Right. right. The, you know, John 10.10, 10, mm -hmm. you know, the abundant life. Amen. You know, the abundant life is not talking about heaven, it's talking about here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Alan? Awesome. Well, I, I, believe, I, I believe that, you know, uh, you mentioned a while ago about uh, Matthew 5, 17. We have to really believe in the scripture. We, we, we preach on it, quoted it, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Mm -hmm. If any man be in Christ, he's a in new creature. Right. He connects it. Oh, behold, uh, oh, behold, all things are gone. Behold, all things are new. So there's a new, there's a new nature. Right. Again, yeah. that has come. So, uh, you know, for so many years, we, pre we hear revival, preach more on uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments. But have you noticed, though, they never preach about the Sabbath. That's part of the Ten Commandments. That's right. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Set right. aside. Which one we want. Exactly. Yeah. And so, no, again, when you break one, you break, break the whole all. thing. You right. mean, if, you, if you're... Um, <clears throat> if you've ever told a, a lie, lie in your life, you are an adulterer. Yes, yeah. you are a thief. You know, yeah. you are a murderer. Mm -hmm. right. You are a, a worshiper and, idol. And, and thieves do not and enter into you have, uh, exactly the whole yeah. exactly the whole thing. <laughs> so who are we deceiving? And first of all, I, get, I believe that we've never understood for decades and decades and centuries, yeah. really. Right. I mean, let's just go that far. That what really the purpose of the law? What God gave? I mean, God right. gave the law first, and then boom, Moses broke it, yeah. and he gave. You know, he had maybe, to write maybe, it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the next show we can right. just a little bit of elaboration <clears throat> on. What did Jesus meant? If you love me, keep his commandments. Right. That uh, as we've gone through today's program, we uh, didn't get very far, but that's fine. I think we got very far. Yeah. So, you know, according to notes, maybe not, but according to the Spirit, yes. yes. The message is, if you have a need in your life, are you any different than Paul? Do you have a greater need in your life than Paul would ever have because that message to Paul was not just to him. That message was to the body of Christ. My grace is sufficient to meet your every need. Thank you for watching us. Please join us again tomorrow. Not Without Blood has been brought to you by the donations of the Crossway Ministry sponsors. If you'd like to join our sponsors in support of our ministry, Contact us at 256-227-5777. We invite you to join us each and every study to grow in the knowledge of the finished work of Christ. Once again, that number is 256-227-5777.